Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I'm Nuki, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to attach a uh, metal ore to a metal rock harvest. So basically, what I'm doing is um, you're going to get this. You're going to see the rock. You're going to hit it with a pickaxe, and it's going to give you the metal. That's kind of like the part we're doing right here. Um, sounds super basic and dumb, I know. But anyways, we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and start off by creating a folder called uh, Copper Rock. I'm going to be using the metal um, resources that we created in the previous video. Um, which is, as you can see right here, the copper ingot. It's got all this stuff. If you haven't seen it yet, you're going to need to check that out probably before seeing this. Otherwise, you might be able to follow. But anyways, we're going to get started. Let's see. Let's search for metal harvest component. Okay, we see a few of them. There's a the rich, correct us, and we'll just take the regular one. And we're going to drag this into the copper rock. Copy it. And we're going to go to sm underscore metal rock. We're going to need the static mesh. Copy it. And then we're going to need the uh, foliage settings. And we're going to copy that as well. Now we got these three things right here. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to rename them to what we need them to be named. Copper harvest. Uh, underscore my mod. There's not going to be any Ingrams in this one because you're not going to be crafting the rocks, obviously, so there's no reason for that kind of stuff. Alright. Oops. Rename this one too. Underscore my mod. Back to where it is and name cover. Okay. So now that we've got this, we're going to go into the harvest copper har harvest component and we're going to look through this. We really have two resource entries. We got 16 members in each of these drop downs um, primal item resource stone and the primal item resource metal. So you can see this is where when you hit it, it's going to give you metal. We're going to go through, we're going to find our copper ingot. Uh, let's find the copper ore. Here's the copper ore, not the ingot, the ore. And we're going to um, reference that. So now when you hit the rock, it's going to give you the copper. Oops, I'm sorry. The Yeah, that's right. Alright, and then we have the... Um, let's see. This is going to tell you like the basic kinds of damage that can happen to it. So you see the metal hatchet, metal pick... Uh, medium st stone, I mean medium dino, um, and the stone pick, and you can obviously adjust those, add new things, add new tools and stuff like that for different components. All right, and we can obviously, if you'd like, you can adjust this. You can get rid of the stone, so you only get metal from it. You can uh, you can do all kinds of stuff with that, or just make it a different kind of metal so you get two kinds of metal from it. Um, descriptive name doesn't really matter. None of this stuff matters all that much. Let's see. Damage indicator amount, give vitamin tree. Okay. Okay, so this means that if you harvest the resource over and over again, then it'll take longer to replenish the next time. Like, the, if you read it, that's what it says. So if you were to adjust this downwards, it would take, instead of 240 seconds, um, in addition to what it usually takes, it would it would just take 120 if you made it 120, or, like, each time it scales upwards. The more times you continuously harvest it, the, mo the, the longer it takes to come back. So this is how far a player has to be, um, minimum distance for a player to be for it to re respawn, and uh, the minimum distance for a structure for it to respawn. And the minimum distance for a non-core structure, like uh, a sign or something like that. So if there's a sign within 540 units, it's not going to respawn. And it, and this is like the interval of which it respawns. You can uh, make it a lot shorter to respawn faster and, and a lot shorter here. But this one's got to be smaller than this one. Remember that. Because the minimum's got to be smaller than the maximum. But that'll be 9,000 seconds, which I believe is, what, 15 minutes? Alright, then we have... That's a lot more than 15 minutes. But uh, let's see. That should be good for this one. 
So we're going to go into our Copper Rock settings. It's re currently referencing the old uh, static mesh, so we're going to reference that one, the one we're currently using. All right, now you can see right here, this is where the uh, attached component class is. So we're going to reference it to our copper harvest component rather than the metal harvest component. And the, let's see, there's stone him harvest impact emitter. That doesn't mean anything except for it, like, it shows like little particles when you hit it, so don't worry about that. That should be good here. Collision presets block all. That's right. It receives decal, which means when you hit it, it'll receive, um, it'll register as a hit. All right, that should be good. Oops. Save those. This is our little static mesh. This is like the actual rock you're gonna see. So we're gonna go ahead and retexture it. By, we're gonna find well first of all we're gonna find this uh, in content browser we're gonna click the search button and we're gonna drag that and copy and paste it into our copper rock folder find the here we go here's the uh, metal rock texture we're gonna look for that and then we're gonna drag that one up the same way copy and paste now we can see this here. We can um we're just gonna make it interesting for the sake of the video. Very yellowish. Let's see if we can get our hue right. Well that's not what copper looks like. Yeah, that's better. Let's go with that for now. Uh, and we're gonna name these underscore my mod. Not absolutely necessary as long as you are careful, but um, it does help when you're just trying to get stuff done. All right, so now we set, we see that um, when we open up this uh, metal rock file uh, for the texture, we can still if we go back down to the texture parameter, we can see this being referenced here. So we're going to use that one instead, creating making that little sphere an orangish color, and then we're going to go to this one, um, the static mesh for the copper rock. And we're going to use that. So now our rock is copperish colored. You can obviously import your own textures and whatnot for these rocks, but I'm just trying to show you guys how to do it in a very basic way. All right. Uh, yes. Okay. Oops. Save it. All right. So now we have our rock right here. And this rock we can use to kind of like place in the world um, as an actual object using the uh, foliage settings. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag this static mesh in here. We're going to use these uh, settings for it. Then we're going to go to the show the instance settings. Pull this down right here. Open this up. And let's make sure these things are the same. When you scroll down, you can see clustering. Everything's the same. Just make sure everything as we go down is the same. Attach component class needs to be the copper um, harvest component. Copper harvest component. We'll go ahead and click that. Now you can't really see it when it's like that, but uh, there you go. Now you can read it. And you're going to scroll down to destroyed mesh is going to be this one. Go ahead and search for that. Go back to act actor class. We just got to make sure all these settings are the same basically. Destroyed mesh base ignore self. Okay. It's not a falling tree, so we're not going to make it a falling tree. Uh, start in, in cold distance. One's gonna be it's gonna be fifteen thousand and twenty thousand. Uh, cast shadow, yes. Effect light dynamic, no. Collision presets. It's gonna be block all. You're gonna have to just find it, but it's right here. Receives decals, yes. All right. 
that should work. We're going to click a little jet mark, go to show paint settings, and we're going to paint it. So now you can see we have our little rock in this world. We have a lot of rocks. Alright, good enough. So we're going to go ahead and go to back to everything normal settings. Ooh, sorry about that. Go ahead and click play. See all these rocks around here. Take out our pickaxe. Let me see. We don't have a pickaxe on us, do we? We do not. Let's give ourselves the resources to make one real quick. This is just a stone pickaxe. Got stone, stone, stone. Stone pickaxes do tend to get more stone, <clears throat> so you gotta remember that. But it should give us a copper here in a moment. Come on. Just give us one. Okay, well that didn't seem to work. We'll see if we can get one from this. Otherwise, I'm starting to lose confidence. There we go, finally! Man, that took a long time. But as you can see, we've been getting copper. Check the inventory. 55 copper, because when I gave myself resources, it gave me 50, so now we have 55. But as you can tell, guys, it worked. So, um, if you're going to go paint this on the map, I'm going to create a tutorial soon on how to do that. Man, that's purplish. Just not notice that. But I'm going to show you guys how to do a, like, a, little, a quick little tutorial um, on this pretty soon. On how to paint it on the uh, original map, the island. And it not break the entire map when you uninstall the mod. It'll, be, it'll we'll make our own little sub-level and whatnot. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you have any other questions, be sure to uh, leave them in the comments below. Anything else you'd like to see, once again, leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next time.